Fordham University is not exactly a uh, university as uh, the educational university. Fordham University, this is very specific to Photon Interactive, built for uh, Photon's internal training requirements. I'm Giri. I take care of the learning management system of Photon. Photon is a omnichannel service provider, uh, basically into IT services for all devices. The goal of uh, Photon right now uh, with respect to learning content is to increase the knowledge capital of uh, the existing user base. Uh, to increase the knowledge capital would also mean uh, to record the learning learning data and also to the, in other words, to capture the learning data, it also need to develop a lot of content. Only with a lot of content, we'll be able to, uh, within the LMS, and only then it will be able to capture the learning data. Thereby, we will have a uh, clear understanding of what our knowledge base is for the uh, organization. Most uh, small, medium uh, enterprises will have a sim similar scenario where uh, the knowledge capital the, uh, or the uh, repository of knowledge of its employees or resources uh, is not exactly captured. It, unless it is there in a system, like in a LMS, uh, it is not possible to uh, capture it exactly to the date. And uh, only when there is an uh, assessment or uh, content that is there and uh, there are uh, some courses available upon completion, the uh, organization will be able to will be able to know that these are the set of uh, skill sets, at least at, le at the level of learning, the employees have, which can be utilized later. The this is a very uh, uh, typical uh, problem or, or a challenge that we have uh, from uh, even from the education institution side we just discussed. See, it's creating a content is a quality content is always a trouble. It, it involves a lot of things. Uh, in the traditional method of content development in an online environment, it, you, uh, you'll have to go through a lot of sequential steps. You'll have to collect the uh, data, and uh, you'll have to speak to the user, uh, SME, and uh, put it in the right sequences, storyboard it, illustrate it. If it requires, you'll have to go through the creation of audio, video, editing, audio editing, and a lot of that. Only then, you'll be able to create a quality content, which can be produced in the course. And uh, for, to all of this, you need the SME's time and a good amount of SME's time. But the, you know, in all practicality, to have a SME's time in, in a setup like ours, and uh, most uh, SME, uh, small, medium enterprises, it's really hard to do that. And we get little to no time of the SME's, and it's really hard to create a content that addresses the uh, learning requirement, and uh, it's even more hard to produce a learning content on time as it is required to uh, meet the learning requirement. It's, it's really hard. Hence, we are the solution we switched from uh, content creation to content moderation and curation. Instead of creating the content right now, as in usually as a training team, we go to the SMEs and uh, we ask for uh, the uh, uh, subject information. They provide us the information. We, uh, then we restructure it, write the objectives, and uh, go on with the creation of the content. And uh, in fast-paced, agile, uh, and uh, learning requirements, such as uh, photons requirement is as such, it's by the time we create and uh, complete the course, that requirement is already over. So if, as a solution, we are 
rather than focusing on creating the content, we empower the SMEs to create the content themselves. Uh, it is that uh, I've been also uh, stuck in this uh, section for a long time. As, in the, uh, uh, as the doctor explained, we have to create quality content. The video should be really good. The quality should be really good. Only then the users will be uh, uh, will will give any attention, if at all. But it's not exactly that. is is also my uh, uh, understanding. As long as the content is structured right, it doesn't have to be really good in terms of graphics. It's still fine. It works if the content has the uh, it's structured right. Tell them what you tell them, tell them, and tell them what you told them. If it is in the right sequence, these basic things are in place. The users will still be able to make use of it, and they are making use of it. Now, always a, a high, rich, graphic design, the graphic rich uh, content is always not required. It is still OK, even if there is not much content to it. Uh, as in the graphics is there. Before the uh, before we switch to this methodology, we developed our just five courses in three years, five technical courses in an online environment. These are the only five courses we were able to create in three years of time, which we were able to make use of. Everything else, uh, many a number of attempts, it fell flat because most often, we were not able to meet it, meet the, create the learning uh, materials itself. And uh, most often, even before we could reach the, uh, 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 complete the learning uh, material, the need is already passed. Most of the users who needed that learning material has already acquired that information from some other way, and uh, it's always in vain. But, after we switched to this method, we were able to create 60 courses in a span of just two months. So this helped us a lot. What influenced the changes? We absence of rigid uh, and formal structure of course format, uh, and uh, choice of delivery methods. Content aggregation was accepted. So as I said, if there is a content that is available on YouTube or any other channel from LinkedIn to any other places, we readily accept it with the citation. And we also credited the authors who were, even if it is not creation, if they had uh, just curated the content or just collected it, it, it was still accepted. And we uh, gave credits to the author for doing the same. Uh, so this is how it's exactly worked out. Uh, little bits of pieces of uh, content. Doesn't matter if it has to be an exhaustive course. Even uh, if it is a part of a course, it still is accepted as it is. It could be in the form of a self-shot video, a podcast, a Word document, or even a, in our case, a directly a code sample. It doesn't matter as long as the content uh, is usable, it will accept it. So this way, we'll be able to make, instead of in a place where uh, the uh, creation of content takes a lot of time and uh, always goes out of, uh, even before the learning uh, <laughs> time is required, we were not able to meet that. Now we are able to do that by uh, taking the content directly from the SMEs in their preferable uh, formats. And we make use, we connect this individual uh, learning uh, content with the help of the competency framework. So let's say uh, a user uh, creates a learning content uh, for uh, some security related uh, uh, assess, uh, course and it does this does not have to be very it does not have to be completely available all the content is not 
required to be completely available over there. Uh, part of the uh, uh, content, even if it's there, it still is fine. We'll be able to make sense of it by mapping it to the competency framework. So a little bit of each of these uh, uh, content we, uh, we receive from so many different sources, from so many different SMEs. We'll put it together in this framework, and we'll be able to make sense of it. The competency framework will act as a guide and will engage the users and the training team. It will be for the training team. It will be the place where for the list of competencies listed, we will know exactly for what competencies the content is available and for what other competencies the comp data is not available and to focus on that area. For SMEs, it gives an incentive for them to start working on areas uh, if they have already information, if they are the experts, they will be able to come and provide information in that area. For users, they have the uh, content and they'll be able to uh, make use of the content that is already available within our LMS, which in also, which turn, uh, it uh, records into our system as a competency that they have also acquired, at least at a learning level. So from the competency level uh, that is acquired from the system, as the user clears each of the assessment as per the uh, learning materials, our PMO team can make use of it, which otherwise may not be possible. Because learning data is, uh, earlier is, uh, is not exactly captured. It's, it's not up to date. In this method, it will be up to date any new technology or uh, skill that a user may have learned, the PMR team will have the up-to-date information as to as at least at learning level, what is the stand? And uh, based on that, they'll be able to assign into uh, projects with the appropriate skills. For example, blockchain is something that is really new, and not many uh, uh, resources have that skill, but if some user had already created that, uh, already knows that technology, and that SME created some uh, part of it, uh, lectures, videos, podcasts, and it's there as a content, and uh, some more users made use of it, and that sets as a base. So we're, with little effort from the training team, and uh, from no create no content to some content and the knowledge base is also increased so that is how the uh, the shift from content creation to content moderation and then setting up the uh, competency pool and to the pmo and making use of that co uh, collective learning uh, exercise into making it use becomes useful these are the, some of the key metrics that we focus on uh, the total number of courses completed by users, average time spent. These are, uh, these are uh, metrics that we collect. We, uh, we build this uh, custom tool, a plugin, which collects this information for us, for us to focus to start with. And this uh, metrics on how we uh, calculate these numbers will differ as the system matures. The challenges that we have uh, currently is that uh, the competencies are not, or it's, it's currently tied directly to the course. In, uh, this works perfectly well in educational institution setup because for the competencies, uh, for, the, for a course, when it is listed, it's all, it uh, would also always have related content to that competencies that is listed here. But in uh, setups such as uh, our uh, organization, it's not always that the content will be available. Even though the competency is required, at least at a learning level, the content is not available, uh, readily available in, as a course. So there is an option, in th there is definitely an option in the uh, model to attach an evidence uh, an external evidence setting that I have competency for iOS development or iOS security, but when a user submits that, any reviewer, anyone, any person who has a, 
competency review access will receive it. The problem here right now is uh, uh, there are many uh, departments from front end to back end and many uh, uh, technologies, JavaScript to uh, database, .NET, and a lot more varieties on that. So irrespective of the department right now, anyone who submits an evidence stating that I have iOS application security competency, everyone with that uh, review access or that role will receive that uh, uh, in, uh, notification. And uh, that looks very cumbersome. And also the uh, learning plan mapping also doesn't look very promising looking at this scenario. So this is an area that we are working on currently and hope we also find some answers from other users and also from the core uh, Moodle team if there is a possibility where we can assign competency review to a very particular uh, SME or a person who can uh, give the uh, authentication, yes, this person has, uh, is competent or not to be able to do that. And these are some, we have uh, customized our uh, foreign university, and uh, this is based on Moodle, as, and these are some of the screens. Uh, we also build a custom uh, mandatory plugin. I'm not sure if it's very clear. Okay, there's this four days left around this area. So that's, that would be like, it, it can be set at course level, and also it can be customized to, uh, in a way where uh, number of, based on the very specific list of users, the course due date can be extended or uh, retrieved, uh, that is possible. And we also have uh, gamified uh, the system. Uh, there is definitely a point system. Um, for every action, almost, uh, for logging into a system, to, uh, to enrolling to a course, to completing an assessment, to completing a course, every action is monitored, and uh, those actions are awarded in the form of points. And there is a leaderboard where the user can, uh, where users are listed in the ascending order, and the details of the points are also listed here, and with the uh, along with the points, how the user achieved those points, number of courses the users are completed, points received, uh, and the badges, certificates, and competencies, all of it is listed there. And uh, this is uh, this is the course catalog page. It's also very customized, and we also have something very uh, different here. It is it's not. It has two types. There is a small bytes and there's a course. Technically speaking, in Moodle, everything is a course. Small bytes is also a course. Course is just a course. The reason why we have separated this both is that, uh, as I said before, we accept content in very little bits of pieces also, which is not enough to form as a uh, as a kind of entire course. In, uh, uh, for example, an iOS application security course, there will be a lot of aspects of it. It may need about uh, 50 different uh, uh, topics to be covered. And a user can uh, provide only two or three of those content. We still accept that and uh, give a heading to that, and we create a course with that information. And that will be a small byte. As in, user can uh, check into that course and just read that information. When we have enough information to form a course out of these small bytes, we will convert that into a formal course with the proper structure, with uh, assessment and everything. Uh, probably a certification and setting the right parameters and uh, completion uh, criteria, everything will be set. He, the quick bytes, that's sorry, the small bytes is just uh, reading material. Every bit of information will be just there. So this is how we also, we, we, instead of waiting for to create a really good uh, content 
and never are being actually to achieve it, the content is definitely there, and from there we grow on, from small bites to a course, a full-fledged course. This is a enrollment page, customized, and this is the actual course page, a forum, and the learning activities, quizzes. This is a custom dashboard that we are talking about. They are five key metrics and uh, delivered based on that. And uh, what also one of the problems that we face is that even before we start with the content, and uh, from rightly from uh, many of the presenters who also were mentioned earlier, uh, it is hard to the, the, to get the users to the learning portal. Uh, the, the usability is very low. It's it's not pr probably the issue of content. It's not only the issue of content at least. Many users refrain from uh, or decide to use the content or not even before they log into the uh, so, uh, sorry decide to use the portal or not even before they log into the portal. And an active and effective PR is required to get the users use the system. It is a majorly uh, a mindset for the users on how they view the uh, portal as. If they think if the portal is cool enough to use, they'll definitely make use of it. And more than w whatever the customization we do, irrespective of how the good looking the UI is, it mostly comes, the most important part is how we set the image of the portal as. That along with the ecosystem of it. The SMEs should have a way for them to uh, benefit for, this is, there should be a system where the SMEs, for putting in that effort, they should have some benefit out of it. For the learners, they should have some benefit out of it. Y yes, definitely they have, it's a given, but it has to be explicit and uh, marketable. Only when we market it right, we'll be able to get the right expected output, even before we start working on the customization. Thank you. Um, thank you. Questions?